All right, so in the last episode, I showed you how we could easily create a page or a route by creating a page inside the pages folder. So I showed you very briefly how we created this dashboard.tsx file inside the pages folder. Let me zoom in just a little bit. And when we visited that route, so if I go to dashboard, we get dashboard page. Okay, we get this component that is just rendered out. Okay, so in Next, instead of having to configure something like React Router, Next takes care of routing for us, uh, and it uses a file-structured file way of doing so. Okay, so if I want to create a new page, I'll call this, uh, call it whatever you want. So if you want to create a route, uh, such as, like, like let's say, for example, a blogs route, okay, you would just name the file blogs.tsx, and then you can go ahead and create the component. So const blogs page, and then just return some JSX like that. And you don't have to do this, but if you want to type annotate it, you could. Okay. And then we have to, and this is very important. We have to make sure we export this as a default export. If you do a named export, like if you just did export const, it would not work. If I try to go to slash blogs, it will not work. Okay, it says the default export is not a React component. So you need to make sure that it is a default export. Okay. So export default blogs page. So now if I save and if I go back to our app, I can now visit the slash blogs uh, route. And that route is going to give us this, uh, this component over here. Okay. And that's pretty much it when it comes to routing. We're not all, all there is, but that's just a very straightforward concept when it comes to routing. It's not that complicated. Okay, just whatever file name you want to call it, that's just going to be the name of the route that you're going to visit to see that component being rendered out. Okay, hopefully that is straightforward. Now, what if we want to create more complicated route paths? Let's say, for example, we want to create nested routes. So let's say, for example, if we're building some kind of blog application, uh, you might have some kind of feature where you want to see uh, the latest uh, blogs, you want to see trending blogs, you want to be able to see the controversial blogs, you want to be able to see blogs that are popular, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, right? We might want to render those blogs based off of the route that the user is visiting. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and create a folder called blogs, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to move this blogs.tsx file inside the blogs folder. Okay, now if we actually try to go to this route, right now if I refresh, you're going to see that it gives us a 404. This is just the default behavior that Next.js does for us. But if I try to go to slash blogs, you're going to see that it no longer works. And that's because inside the blogs folder, it treats this subfolder as an actual uh, as an actual sub route. So in the last video, notice how when I tried to visit the API route, in order to actually get to the actual uh, handlers and so, for example if we wanted to visit slash hello we had to prefix that hello route with slash api okay so i had to go to slash api slash users or hello right in order to actually get to that resource well similarly this blogs folder is a sub route you can think of it like a sub route okay and we can go ahead and create our own uh, routes inside the sub route so to actually access this blogs.tsx route, it would be slash blogs slash blogs, right? It still uses the file name, okay? So uh, if we want to make it so that we can just see this page without adding slash blogs at the end of slash blogs, just changes to index.tsx and then go to slash blogs and you'll see that we have blogs page. So you can think of this like the, the main blogs page. Okay, you can think of this like the main page and then if we want to visit additional sub routes, we would just create additional files for those routes. So for example, if I were to create a route or a, uh, a sub route for blogs called trending, I'll just name that file trending.tsx and let me go and just copy this JSX, paste it in here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and call this, uh, I'll call this a trending page. Again, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And now, if I were to go to slash blogs 
slash trending, it would give me the trending page. Okay, so this is now a sub route of blogs. If I wanted to create a new route, I'll call this popular. So you may want to create this route to display all uh, popular blog posts, right? So let me just call this a uh, popular blog page. Okay, so let's go to slash blogs slash popular. And I'll give you popular blogs page. I think you get the point. What if you wanted to create sub routes for slash blogs slash popular, right? You can also do that as well. So all you do is you just create a subfolder. Okay, I'll create a subfolder called popular inside blogs and I'll move popular inside here. So to actually visit this popular's blog page, we'd have to go to slash popular slash popular. That's because the file name is called popular.tsx, but we can change it to index.tsx. So when we visit popular, it'll render that file over here, or it'll render that component inside index.tsx. And if I want to create a sub route for slash blogs slash popular, uh, what should I call this? Uh, let's just call this, um, well, maybe we might have like, oh, I guess let me introduce to you something else, which is dynamic routes, right? Maybe we might have uh, dynamic routes where we might have like a route parameter, uh, like an ID. And based off of that ID, we want to render a specific, uh, a, a specific popular blog, right? So inside this popular folder, I can go ahead and create a new file, and I can actually, uh, I can actually specify a route parameter that the user can add in the address bar, and we need to use square brackets for that. So you just do square brackets and then the name of the route parameter. So I'll just do ID, okay? So square brackets ID and then .tsx, okay? And what this will do is this will allow us to create something called a dynamic route, okay? So, for example, you're probably used to having route parameters where uh, the route parameter will be something like a, uh, a post ID, a user ID, or some kind of ID, and then you'll get the route parameter and you'll send that route parameter to some API, and the API will use that to fetch a resource based off of the ID, and then you'll return it to the front end, and then you'll render that piece of information, right? Well, we can do that similarly, but without having to use, uh, you know, any additional library, we can just go ahead and create a uh, square bracket id.csx file, okay? And then we can create dy dynamic routes from there. So let me show you how that's going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'll call this, uh, I'll call this uh, popular blogs, I'll just call this a popular blog, okay? And what I'm gonna do is right now, this is just a popular blog. And if we go to slash popular without any route parameter, it's gonna render popular blogs page. So if I go to, if I refresh, we're at popular blogs page, but if I start to add route parameters or route parameter, so for example, if I add a route parameter, it's going to give me popular blog. Okay, you can see that this component that's inside the square bracket id.tsx file is being rendered. Okay, and this 1324324 value is the actual value of the id route parameter. Okay, so I can pass literally anything that I want in here, and it's always going to render this component, this this component's inside id.tsx all right so that's just pretty much it when it comes to routing you have basic routes you have nested routes and then you also have something called dynamic routes okay now with dynamic routes it gets a little bit more complicated which is why in the next episode we're going to go ahead and cover data fetching because there's three main functions that we need to talk about we need to talk about get static props get static paths as well as get server side props okay because right now with this dynamic route, um, we need to make sure that we are taking advantage of Next.js's uh, pre-rendering techniques. Okay, that happens underneath the hood. So we need to talk about those functions that are that are used for data fetching. Okay, so I'll explain a lot more about that in the next episode, and I'll show you how we can actually have Next.js generate those paths for us. Okay. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace out.